Prayer is the lifeblood of the Christian faith, but many followers of Jesus still struggle to make it a part of their daily lives, and many church leaders aren't much different. I truly believe one of the most important things a leader can do is build a strong personal prayer life and a dynamic prayer culture. And with the new year here, there's no better time. Today, we'll talk about how to make prayer work, both in your daily life and in your church, today on the Grow Leader Podcast. Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to the Grow Leader Podcast, where we grow leaders that grow churches by helping them reach their full potential. I'm Chris Hodges, and I'm so thrilled that you've joined us for this episode. And once again, I'm so thrilled to be joined by my co-host, Matt Miner. How Happy you doing, Matt? Happy yeah. New Year, PC. It's exciting, isn't it's it? It's weird to say 2022. Um, I'm excited about it, though. I love the New Year. It's one of my favorite holidays. So what did you guys do over the holidays that, that kind of move you from Christmas? There's that transitional moment between Christmas and the New Year. What do you do? A lot of football games? We do everything right after Christmas because as a pastor, I don't have Christmas until Christmas is over. That's right. Because, you know, we do these boatload of services, yeah. and then you get all the events that we do with... You know, the people that give in our church, our legacy teams, our Christmas parties, our staff parties. So honestly, it feels like I don't even experience Christmas until Christmas is over. But between Christmas and New Year is my favorite time. Did a little duck hunting. Come on. Yeah, and just a lot of couch sitting, a lot of football games. So it's a lot of fun. So a lot of us are thinking about resolutions, what, what to do next. I love new, anything new. I don't care if it's a new pair of shoes, uh, especially a new year. It's just, a, it's a clean slate. We get to start all over again. Are you a resolution guy? Um, I don't know if I'm a resolution guy, but I, I love, um, most of my resolutions are the same every single year. It's, really? like, it, it's kind of like habits that, you know, I just kind of reapply myself to a certain habit, be it working out. Uh, which is probably a big one for a lot of people, <laughs> especially after the Christmas season. Yeah, I always had that one, of course. I mean, I always need to lose weight. And uh, so in the fast <laughs> kind, kind of starts it out for us, you know. So we have, the, we have the fast coming up in a few days. And so I'm already kind of in my pre-fast routine right. to, get, to get ready for it because you kind of have to get ready for it mentally and physically. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, but I actually do a lot of planning before the new year. Okay. So I have this full focus planner, which by the way, I, I don't get any kickback for, but I highly recommend if you're looking for a great planner uh, to go to full focus planner, I guess fullfocusplanner.com um, by my friend, Mike Hyatt. And I actually go through and set my annual goals and do reviewing and I ask God to give me a word for the new year. So it's a real whole exercise for me. So this is bonus content. We're not talking about planning or organization <laughs> skills today at all. But um, so you actually told the staff a few years ago, actually bought everyone on staff, one of these planners. And, and it's, it's changed my whole organizational flow. Why do you love that style of planning? Uh, how, how does it help you focus fully to start things off? Because it begins with annual goals. So if you think, if you could only get eight things done, that's what I do. I do eight things that I want to really accomplish in 2022. If I can get those eight things done this year, I call this year a success, then it allows you to back in then what are the activities that have to happen every day in order to be able to say, I got those eight things done. And then what the full focus planner does is it reduces every day down to three tasks, three major tasks that you're gonna get done that day that you can call that day a success. And they say there's something genius and something that happens in our psych psychology when you physically write it, not just think it. Well, so you're not even typing it in your phone or anything like that, that there's something about pen to paper uh, in these these paper planners that actually does something to our psychology that actually allows it to get done. And honestly, Matt, since I've started using it, I feel like I'm way more productive. So I actually include it in my daily time with the Lord in the morning, which is our topic today. It's great. We're going to talk more about that. That's a question you get a whole lot, and, and I love hearing about it. So I do want to say this. Thank you so much to the team at Wesleyan Investment Foundation yes. for sponsoring the podcast. And they're, they're faithful friends, and they're an incredible resource. If you're a, a church planner looking for a place to borrow or you're an established church looking for a place to invest, uh, we, we stand by them and support them. Uh, they're incredible people. I know they're having a great start to the year. Uh, as well. Uh, so a lot of things on people's lists. I think everybody's made, even non-list people are making lists right now <laughs> to start the new year. Um, you're such a list person. You say that uh, if, if I you, had a list of everything I like, lists would be at the top of the list. <laughs> that's exactly what you say. <laughs> I've heard that for a long time. Um, so we're thinking about our fitness. We're thinking about, you know, as leaders, um, communication to our teams. Um, but I mean, really, 
uh, the thing we're going to talk about today could revolutionize your entire year. You have a statement that I, I, I've held on to this for a decade. Um, if this year is the best year of your life spiritually, it will be the best year of your life. That's exactly right. So I think one of the things that gets overlooked in our resolutions is the spiritual. And I know for a fact, and not even might, it will improve your life if your prayer life improves. In fact, that's the first thing when we train church planners uh, with ARC, uh, the Association of Related Churches, the first lesson we teach is to win the war in the spiritual. And one of the things we coach church planters in is whatever your prayer life is, make it better, improve it, uh, because it's a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle. And then to have that communion with God every day, uh, to start the day off right. I mean, I know we can pray any time throughout the day, but there's right. nothing like first part of the day prayer. And unfortunately, Matt, uh, what I've discovered o- over 38 years of ministry is that no one lacks the desire or even the inspiration. Uh, there's a lot of inspiring messages and books on the topic of prayer. Right. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to fill the time. It's It feels awkward or it's not engaging, and people literally don't know. And I think if I've had a voice into the to the prayer topic in in the body of Christ in my lifetime, my unique little spot in the vast array of things you can talk about in the world of, world of prayer is just making it practical. I call it making prayer work. And I don't think you know this, by the way. I'm going to announce it right now <laughs> on the Grow Leader podcast that I'm two months away from turning in another manuscript of my next book, and it's called Pray First. Come on, that's awesome. And we're attaching it to uh, what our team at the church is doing with our app, and I'm just dedicated to improving all of our prayer lives, mine included, and let's learn how to make prayer work. So there are a lot of resources that we're actually going to give you ways to access during this podcast. And so uh, I want to go ahead and just talk about a couple of those right now. We'll talk about how you can use them later on. But the Pray First app, if you go to the App Store, if you're an iPhone user, uh, also I think it's the Google Play Store, you can find the Pray First app there. Um, which is just a tool, and everything we're going to talk about in this prayer journal in just a moment. You can have it on your phone. Is available on your phone. With music and everything. That's this right. It's a and, beautiful app. And we'll, if you're watching, we'll put a link down at the bottom of the screen where you can access the PDF of the prayer journal, and we'll put it in the show notes as well. So I grew up in church. Um, prayer, when I thought about it, um, I was like, man, that's a great idea. <laughs> I, I, I recognize the need for it. Um, but I, I had been in situations where prayer was just boring i'm just yeah. being honest right so right. Just, just boring <laughs> um it was hard it felt like i didn't have the words to say and i read a stat this week uh and this is not new church attenders this is pastors so <laughs> 600 pastors Uh oh okay 57 percent of 600 pastors surveyed 57 percent said they prayed 22 minutes or less every day yeah uh, that's probably high for most 39 <laughs> percent was 22 minutes to one hour every day and then only that that few the few remaining uh, true followers of Jesus were, were <laughs> praying more than that. And I want to talk about why that is and how. What do we do uh, to grow in our prayer life? Well, my prayer journey was pretty much the same. I grew up, you know, uh, in church. Never, I've never not been in church. So I grew up with Sunday school and and our pastor. His name was Brother Dean. Brother Herschel Dean was my first pastor, by the way. And he had a pre-service prayer meeting in a prayer room. And it was so dark in that room, and he went and knelt, and you could hear nothing being said. And I thought that's what prayer was. Wow. I thought it was just meditation, thinking, kneeling, dark, boring, didn't know what to say, was afraid to move. That was my basis of prayer. And then I kind of graduated to a little bit later in Sunday school, we did circle prayer. Yeah. And that's where everybody pray. You know, this Sunday school teacher, everybody pray. And you didn't know what to say. And when you, so you do your part and squeeze the hand of the person next to you. And it'd get to me and I just squeeze it right on around. You know, I didn't have anything to say. And, um, but then I, when I gave my life to the Lord uh, at, at 15 years old, my church was called Bethany World Prayer Center. And my pastor, who's still my pastor today, has been for, for these 43 years now, um, is the prayingest man I know. <laughs> Hmm. He just, he taught me prayer. And I'm just so grateful. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Larry Stockstill, my pastor, who is a true prayer warrior. In fact, uh, when I was on staff at Bethany, Matt, uh, it's a big old 6,000 seat auditorium. He was there on Sunday mornings at 4 a.m. 
to start his prayer time. And again, not knowing what to say, I had a key to the auditorium, and I snuck in there wow. and would sit in a place where I didn't think he could see me and just watch this man spend time with God. And that's how I learned prayer. I learned prayer by watching it from a mentor, not any book, not any sermon. I learned it watching a person who actually enjoyed his time with the Lord. And that's that's literally where I learned it. So could you contrast a little bit the, the the previous environment where you'd seen kind of a dark room, you couldn't hear anything, to how you saw uh, Pastor Larry pray, because this is how we pray today in church. Yep. Church of the Highlands, if you come to any of our Saturday prayer meetings, which are every Saturday of the year or 21 days of prayer, this is how we pray. Well, what did you see when you saw him pray? It was conversational. It was relational. Because I always was thinking formal. I was praying, you know, King James prayers and putting as many vows and arts as I could into it, right? right? And when I realized that prayer is simply a, a communion with God and confronting the enemy, that's how I define it. You commune with God. You talk to him just like you and I are having this conversation right now. And this is literally what my prayer life sounds like is what I'm, how I'm talking with you and our audience today. But also learning the skills of, of con- confronting the enemy. A lot of the prayer in the Bible are, are, are not only standing on the promises of God, but they're also confronting the enemy. And honestly, I find that very exciting. So our church did have these, these Saturday prayer services um, before I came to Highland. So that's the first thing I started was Saturday prayer. In fact, we were having 21 days of prayer and fasting before we had our first service. If, if anybody ever wonders why we're a February, February 4th, 2001 launch date, it was because we wanted to take the month of January and have 21 days of prayer. So our church was literally built on the foundation of prayer and fasting. Even had pastors and leaders tell me, that's too much, too far, too fast with a brand new church. You shouldn't be teaching fasting in a brand new church. And honestly, Matt, you you know well that it is is one of the things that has brought our church together. And I want to say at this point, if I may, that this is also a great time. If you're not planning on any type of prayer effort to start the year, join us. Yep. Um, January 9th through the 29th, we'll start uh, this coming Sunday. If you're listening to this podcast on its release date, it's coming this coming Sunday. We have things on our website that help you prepare for fasting. Of course, we'll jump into fasting here in a minute about all the different ways we can fast and pray. But I- I'm just committed to making this work in our lives and for us to actually enjoy it. And I'll say this too for, for, for those who are listening: this is not a, a this is not a programmatic piece for us. I mean, it's it's part of what we do. But the thing that you've taught us so well is a lifestyle of prayer. And this isn't new. You've been doing this. I've heard stories when you were a youth pastor in, in, in Colorado before your youth gathering, the day before. Yeah, there we was called prayer. it Prayer Warriors. And it was on a Tuesday night because um, our youth service was on a Wednesday night, and they, and they came over to my house. And it was 50, 60, 70 kids packed into you know, my house praying the paint off the wall, and they enjoyed it again. And that's, that's if... if, if if our audience doesn't hear anything else, hear this. You can actually learn a way to actually enjoy it where you're disappointed when it's over, not making yourself actually have to do it. And it works better corporately if you do it personally. Exactly. And so what are those secrets? Let me get into a few of these, all right? And I want to give three Ps. I have five, but I don't have time for all five. But there are three Ps of prayer that I want to teach you. And the first is the priority of prayer I think God can listen to your prayer any any time throughout the day. There's something about first, all things first. So why do we even have 21 days of prayer in January? Because it's the first of the year. Why do we go to church on a Sunday? Because it's the first day of the week. Uh, why do we tithe? Because it's the first of what God's given us. I don't even think a tithe means 10%. I think it means the first great. 10%. It's the priority, not the amount. Well, the same is true with prayer. If you can start your day and your phone's not first and your email's not first and your, you know, your, your, whatever you're going to do with your life, a shower or even a workout's not first. If you can make prayer the first thing, if you could spend time with God first, just try it and see how making the priority of it, the morning time, um, there's some power behind that. And the second P kind of goes with that first one. And that is you need a place. I am a big believer that you know you need to go to a specific place. The Bible says that Jesus went to a solitary place and prayed. He had a prayer place. He had a place that he enjoyed going to pray. And so uh, for me, it's in the basement in my office with an old torn chair that I've been sitting in for 20 years that just 
it's just comfy. Matt, I hadn't found a better one to replace it. I, it needs to be replaced, but man, it's just my prayer chair. That's awesome. And 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 I, I go in there and spend time with God. But I, but for some of you, it might be as you're walking or getting your exercise, or it might even be in the shower or driving in the car. It doesn't matter. Spend time with God, but have your prayer place. And then the last one, the one I'm really the most passionate about, is the plan of prayer. You know, when the disciples came to Jesus and said, "Teach us to pray." They knew how to pray. I don't think people realize that. They were, right. they were raised in Jewish homes, and you couldn't even go through your bar mitzvah without knowing right. how to pray. They, were, they would have been given prayer books. So why do they say, teach us how to pray? Because they had never learned how to do it like that. They were doing the same thing I was doing in that auditorium. They were watching a man pray and enjoying it, and they wanted that. Like, That's great. Teach us how to do that is what they were saying. And, of course, that's when Jesus prayed the Lord's Prayer, which in my opinion is not a prayer. Jesus is a rabbi, which means he would have been teaching his disciples topically. That's literally how, how Jewish rabbis taught. They taught by topic. And so in my opinion, really the Lord's Prayer, you can pray it as a prayer, but the Lord's Prayer are seven phrases that are topics. They're headings for things you do in prayer. And it's one of the things that we teach course, in this Pray First booklet that we give the contents of it away. You can have it in your church. You can print it, put your name on it. We don't, and, um, but, but, but giving these, these plans of prayer and going through the seven elements of the Lord's Prayer as a plan will revolutionize your prayer life. So can I get real practical just for a yeah, second? Yeah, let's do it. Because so, a lot of people ask, you know, Pastor Chris Hodges, what does the morning look like for you? So you wake up, walk yeah. us through that and how, how having a prayer plan makes a difference even in your life. Yeah, so I have about six different prayer plans that I can pray, and I like mixing it up, just like I like mixing up what I eat every day. Yeah. So I enjoy the variety. Um, but for me, if you really want to know the literal details, and this is the most asked question I get from leaders. Okay. So we do a lot of roundtables, and by the way, if you want to be a part of our roundtables, uh, you can go to the growleader.com the growleader .com yep. website, and there's places for you to be involved in our experiences and our roundtables. And the most asked question is about my morning time, and I'm not saying it like I figured it out, and please don't put me on any pedestal because I have to be a disciplined person just like everybody else, and I don't do it every day. So let me just throw that out there. But most days, literally wake up, I drink a full glass of water to rehydrate, go straight to the coffee maker, get my coffee. Tammy's, my wife has already pre-programmed it, so it's hot and ready and waiting on me, which, by the way, is usually around 6 a.m. is when I roll out of bed and go straight down to that old torn chair in my, in my office. That's, it's real wide, Matt, and it's comfy. Anyway, so I get in that chair. Actually, it's sound a little corny to people, but I light a candle. I have, I have a candle with a manly scent, I might add. It's a mandal. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's is a, that what they call it? Yeah, it's a mandal. Okay, I got a mandal going on there. <laughs> I never heard that before. So I light it because I just, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I just enjoy doing that. Um, I, I take the, the, the first moment and I journal. I have a 10-year journal, which, again, I would, a great product that I would love to promote. I don't get any kickback from, you know, but just something I use. It's, a, it's called the 10-year journal. Right. It's a small entry, and I read, and I just kind of focus on, you know, what's going on in my life that day, what happened to me yesterday. It's more of a reflection time. And honestly, Matt, because I don't have the energy to do anything else yet. Right. I haven't fully kind of, you know, woken Waking up. up. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm not awake yet. But then I always go to the Word of God first. I read the one-year Bible. So and an important tip for those that are listening, uh, even though we have the app on our phones and we have the one-year Bible on the homepage of the Church of the Highlands website, I don't go to either one of those places. I actually have a physical paper copy of the one-year Bible because if I see my phone or see those red dots, my phone doesn't have any red dots on it. <laughs> If I do, I have to see who texts me, what emails. There are no unread emails in my, on my phone, none. I can't handle the red dots. So if I see that, I'm, I, I can't already take it. So my discipline, and I'm passing this on, is I never go digital till I'm done. That's great. Because if I, if I see the news, if I see an email, anything, so I leave everything still in, in where it was plugged in from the night before. When we plug it in, when we go to bed, Read the one year Bible. I know I'm making this way too long. <laughs> but then I pull out this prayer booklet, and in it has all the different ways that I pray. And, and when I was a youth pastor, these were just sheets of paper stapled together. 
You've seen that yep. when we first started the church, and now it's in a beautiful booklet. But it has the different, the Lord's Prayer, the Tabernacle Prayer, Praying Scripture, the Prayer of Jabez, Warfare Prayer. And I don't do it all. I just pick something that seems interesting to me that day, and I spend time with God. And I do get asked, what is the most, the most common prayer that I pray? And it's, it's the Tabernacle Prayer. I love walking through the furniture of the, the Tabernacle in the Old Testament as a protocol to the presence of God. Let me say this to free somebody up. I have a lot of red dots on my phone. Uh, <laughs> and uh, very different. I saw you looking at me with that face like, are you serious? Well, well, very, very different personalities. But I, I have also, and we're, we're pro-digital. Most of you are listening to this. You're listening to this because of the technology of, of a digital world. But um, I, I, have, I also have a one-year Bible that's paper because my, my personality, I'll be reading a story about Jesus um, telling the guys to fish, and then I'm fishing for a fly rod five minutes later. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I can't do it. And so there's something about being in a non-distracted environment, which changes with seasons of life. I have young kids at home. You don't have young kids at home right now. And so, you know, you've got to find a place, there, be it your office, be it a room in your house, but some place where you can be in a non-distracted environment. And where is your place? Jesus. My place is actually at the office. And so I'll, I'll get up and, and go a little earlier um, and spend time there That's before good. everybody comes in. Yeah, and if I don't do that, it makes that time with God, which is supposed to be still and quiet and non-distracting, really, really hard if I've got four kids asking me for breakfast or, or something like that. And one of the things that I love to include, and I think people already know this, but I just want to say it. I have a little Bose speaker on my little nightstand next to that chair in my basement, and I always play instrumental music because if it has words, I get distracted that way. I'll yeah. start thinking about the words because I'm a musician, and I'll start thinking about the chords, and, hey, we pro should probably sing that song at church. But actually listen to instrumental worship that, to me, is less distracting so that I can really focus on spending time with God. And music's a big piece of it. That's, it's your personal worship moment uh, to start the day off. I want to say this, just in the prayer app, our team actually has written songs specifically geared toward their prayers um, for your prayer time, and, uh, and I think that's an extra piece you can add in that we all have access to that can change what your time with God And we're even like. adding to that in 2022 where that prayer app not only has songs already on the app that you can use while you're praying, but also songs that match where you are that's in that great. prayer movement. So when you're in uh, spending time worshiping God, it'll be worshipful songs. But when you're in warfare, it, the music kind of goes a little stronger, more majestic. When you're in you know uh, a time where you're, Whatever the the part of prayer is, we're matching the music to fit that time. So good. Uh, I can't wait for that to come out. Uh, so we talked about the personal piece, our personal prayer lives, and we could spend six episodes talking about personal prayer life. But do you want to just remind you, all of the prayers, the templates, the plans that Pastor Chris has talked about is available in the in the prayer journal. And so you can get the PDF. We'll tell you how to do that at the bottom of the screen. Also on the show notes, but for, for leaders, so for pastors of churches, leaders of even businesses, I know business yeah. leaders that do the same thing, what's another step they can take to improve uh, their prayer covering uh, and their prayer lives this year? Yeah, so I always say have corporate prayer. If your business, of course your church, have times that you organize prayer. For us, it's every Saturday. It's twice a year for 21 days of prayer. So we, it's just an organized effort. Have something. It doesn't have to be that. And again, I want to give an invitation to those who would like to join us, we have hundreds of churches just meet together and stream our prayer services at 6 a.m. Central every morning during yep. these 21 days. We'll give you the prayer focuses. If we have it, you can have it. We would love to bless you with that. And join us. Let's just have a prayer revolution. And for sure, join us in the 21 days of fasting as well in right. some type. We'll talk about that before we close. Yep. Let's leave a little time yes, sir. to make sure we talk about fasting as well. But probably one of the best things ever is to make sure you... And you have, and I have personal intercessors. And I've trained everybody on our team to recruit people who love to pray to pray specifically for you. I have seven people. They're in a text thread, and they hear from me whatever I'm, whenever I'm traveling, whatever I'm going through. I'm letting them know what I'm, what I'm going through in my life, so I'm covered in prayer. And then I think, honestly, we can be that for other people as well. So that's a, that's a beautiful way to keep prayer in your business, your personal life as well. You're looking for two groups of people for me, uh, people that love you, and you guys know who loves you. They're, they're the people that just no matter what you do, they're always with you. Um, and I also found people just have a gift of intercession. There are people that just 
They'd love it. I, I don't think I have the gift of intercession. I pray. I don't think I do either, actually. I enjoy the pr- praying, but I don't think I have a gift. I, c- I don't dream about doing it for hour right. upon hour. And there are definitely people who have that gift. Yeah, so great. And it, it's changed our lives. It's changed our marriage for me to be able to say, hey, here's what Heather and I are dealing with this week. Here's where one of our, ki- one of our kids could use prayer. And to know that there's this group of people you know, that are just, hey, we, we got you. We're praying for you. We're Key takeaway from today's podcast, get some personal intercessors. It's great. Um, how about developing a solid prayer base just with um, corporate prayer and also fasting? I want to talk about fasting a lot because it's very misunderstood. Also, I think it's one of those things that it's not people that people don't want to fast. It seems too hard. They don't know how to fast. Again, they don't know how. So it's not desire. It's not inspiration. And honestly, a lot of motivation, as you've already said, coming out of a of a feasting season uh, of Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that we've already experienced. But prayer is not a diet. Um, I heard someone say, prayer doesn't change the way you look, it changes the way you see. It's gonna do it, it, it's a perspective change that when you set aside something of the world. So here's my best teaching, I'll try to do it in like a minute about fasting that would probably open people's eyes to what fasting really is. There was this moment Matthew chapter 17, um, the disciples uh, bring a boy that, that was full of the devil, and they couldn't drive the demon out of this little boy. And they were shocked by it because they had prayed for people, and they were getting healed, but they couldn't do this one. And Jesus makes this statement. I want you to hear this carefully. He said, oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. So he identifies the problem with two words, unbelieving and perverse. Let me define those two words. Unbelieving means you're, you're not connected enough to God. And perverse means you're too connected to the world. Mm. So you're both unbelieving, not connected enough, and you're perverse, too connected to. All right? Bring the boy to me. He cast the devil out. Of course, the disciples are embarrassed, and the Bible says they pulled Jesus off to the side because they're embarrassed and said, why couldn't we drive it out? like it's worked in other places, why was this one so tough? So he already diagnosed the problem, right? right? Unbelieving, perverse, not connected enough to God, too connected to the world. And then Jesus said these beautiful words, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. And here's a definition for prayer. Prayer connects you to God. Fasting disconnects you from the world. And I say that because I think when people say fasting, they only think about starving you know, or it's always about food, and it's not. I would challenge the audience today, Matt, to think about the place where they're just too connected to the world. And food is probably, because because food comes from the earth, and we do it three times a day, right? We eat food. It connects us to the world just just about more than anything. Right. But some of us would do well to fast the news for 21 days. Some of us would do well to get off our phones for 21 days. Some of us would do well just to get off social media for 21 days. Some of us would do well to, to not even read or, or watch any movies, just get into the Bible for 21 days. And I do include some type of food fasting. And there are different types. You don't need really us to go through the gamut of it. There are some tremendous websites from Jensen Franklin to uh, uh, Dr. Bill Bright's material uh, from Crew that is still on there. It's the best I've ever seen, The Seven Basics of Fasting and Prayer. Go find that booklet. It's fabulous to learn how to do a selective fast or a partial fast. But I would encourage everybody to do what I call, I think I coined this phrase, a soul fast. The things that are polluting your soul that have you too connected to the world. And let's just set it aside for 21 days and then spend time with God. And here's what I know. And that is your spiritual life is going to start this brand new year, new year off like with rocket propulsion. Is that the right way to say that? I mean, uh, you're going to you just it. take off. Honestly, it will, it will start this year off the right way. So my third time, I in, I'm inviting you to join us. January 9th to the 29th, 21 days of prayer and fasting. No matter what time zone you're in, there's a way to log on and be a part of that. We'll keep all of those messages up. So we're live at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, but those messages will stay up every single day for 24 hours. And so whenever you're able to participate and be a part of us, we'd love to have you, people in your church, uh, spend time with us praying. If this is the best year of your life spiritually, it will be the best year Of of your life. Such a great way to start the year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt.
We'll be back in the month of February. As always, thank you so much to Wesleyan Investment Foundation for all they do to support the Grow Leader podcast. Don't forget to check out the Grow Leader website to see about upcoming roundtables, events in your area. We have a conference coming up in the summer. Uh, it could be getting thin on seats. I'm not sure where we are well, right actually, now. Well, actually, Matt, we, we opened up registration in November, and in 44 minutes, the the Grants Mill location was sold out. So, yeah, there are a few seats left at other locations uh, if they want to be a part of the Grow Conference this summer. Growleader.com. Uh, February is going to be special. You don't want to miss February. It's going to be incredible. We'll see you next month, everybody.